We've had a lot of requests for different topics in our behind the scenes tours from the temporarily closed Lake Spear Railroad Museum at the St. Louis County Depot in downtown Duluth. And this is one of them. In fact, this is one that has had so many requests and it really is a secret item in the collection. Not open to the public even when we are open to the public. So I know you're gonna to wanna to save this particular episode for all of posterity. So right now, get your VHS tape, a clean one, put it right in the machine, hit record. If you have Betamax, the quality is even better, and then you can look at this okay, over and over. So, um, oh, YouTube doesn't really work, but never. Okay, well, you're going to like this episode a lot. 1854, they charter up in Canada the Grand Trunk Railway, and it's going to operate Ontario and Quebec, but it expands into the United States, including seven states all the way from Maine to Illinois. The Grand Trunk Western is truly an international railway. And things are going pretty good. The railroad is expanding. Business has been strong. It's made it through a lot of challenges. But now, right after the Civil War in the United States, Canada is about ready to become a federation. And that means they're scared about some stuff. What they're worried about most is America. Remember the War of 1812? The Grand Trunk is one of the reasons that led to the Confederation that built Canada as we know it today. Because it was this international railway, there were fears, just like from 1812, that there may be hostilities in some later date. And Canada needed to come together, not just as colonies of England, but as its own federation. And that happened on July 1st, 1867. And one of the reasons? The Grand Trunk Railway. The Grand Trunk would have expanded even more under the leadership of Charles Melville Hayes, they were poised for massive expansion along the east coast of the United States. Unfortunately for Mr. Hayes, he was a guest passenger on the Titanic, and those plans never materialized. But this Grand Trunk relic is in the collection, well, was in the collection of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, and that is our story today. Come on board. The Grand Trunk is eventually nationalized into the Canadian National Railway. In 1910, they had this coach built for passenger service in and around the Detroit area. Later, it migrated to another Canadian National U.S. subsidiary, the Duluth Winnipeg and Pacific, where it was part of the wrecking cruise car. So it was probably converted into some sort of makeshift sleeper. In 1979, DWP was done with their wrecking crew done with their wrecker, and done with this car. So they donated it to the Lake Spear Railroad Museum, where it was reconfigured once again as a coach. And we used it on many excursions. Did have one little problem, and that was it was still ice-activated air conditioning, which made it cumbersome. Along comes one of our greatest volunteers to the museum, Martin C. Fair, and he needs a project. So, working with Martin, right here, we decided to turn the car over to him. Marty has been working on this for how many years? A lot of years, 12 years. <laughs> 12 years in the making, a conversion once again. So it starts as a coach, becomes probably a sleeper or something for the wrecking crew, and now a private car in the collection of the private car collection of Martin C. Fair. Yes, that's indeed true. <laughs> Why don't you give us a tour, Marty? You bet. We, uh, we started out by taking all the coach seats out of the car we saved a few for the far end of the car, but our idea was to have a lounge. We didn't want anything except a lounge car to go with your diner so that folks could come out in here after they were through eating. And we do have a bar. Uh, the bar has a refrigerator, a microwave, because we intended about 50% to be uh, social and the other half would be folks after lunch. I mean, it includes a little outlet here that I found in some catalog somewhere for hooking up the crock pots and whatnot, and uh, we've had a lot of conveniences like that. I found lights that go under the bar, and when we turn off the overhead lights, the cleaning lights, or as the gal who helped my wife design the car said, the 2 a.m. lights, because they come on at 2 a.m. and everybody clears out, then that those look very nice in, when we're running it. So we'll take a short tour here. This is the area behind me was obviously the bar area and we had hoped to set up snacks and whatnot for people and a lounge after pa Ken's passenger trains and then as you walk into here this was intended to be 
and what it is is a place for folks to come in after the dinner after the dining car sit down with their friends and just relax and uh, so we we did cut the capacity dramatically in order to get a more comfortable space a friendlier space we can seat three here with four here and these other tables are two apiece is comfortable uh, then that's the light fixtures were uh, my wife's idea that is not railroad standard by any means at all that she found them online of course and uh, that's what we put in here in the women's room which is located on one end of the car uh, this is a unique coach because it also has a lounge in for the women for changing and for doing things of that nature that uh, that they would need to do it had seats in it and uh, we we looked at the options we had and of course I put new plumbing in it so, and my wife came in with uh, with her friend who was helping us with the painting and whatnot and they decided that pink would be the appropriate color for that room and by golly pink it is and you aren't going to miss it and you aren't going to forget it and now as we continue on into another section of the coach this portion of the coach here was designed in 1910 to be the smoker and let me say that smoking was universal at that point in time however cigar smokers and pipe smokers had to come to this section of the car and the air conditioning flow is such that it flows through the car and then goes through that huge vent there to suck all the smoke out of the car and away from the passengers who maybe don't care for that particular brand of cigar so and we also because this was an obvious dividing point we saved some of the seats from the original coach and we put them in here for families or for groups who wanted to sit and talk and and that sort of thing we left the luggage racks in here for ambiance I just learned that word and uh, we we think it's going to be very nice we sure hope it's going to be very nice because we've got years of effort into it back here is the utilities uh, the men's room was so very small that it started right here and stopped right there and I, I always said that if you have weighed enough you better make up your mind what you're going to do before you go through that door because there's no turning around inside there but it did have the nice little corner sink that was so typical of the railroads of that era and this luckily was a luggage compartment and so <laughs> almost a year later after you cannot believe how they built these cars I got the partition out of there so that now you can go in this door but the room you have is now this much room an interesting part of the work that you run into when you purchase a car this old is the condition that the car is in first of all this was as far as the men's room went so it was very crowded and secondly this was a, a luggage area but when I started changing converting the the toilet over to the retain, retaining system I discovered there was no floor under it at all and before the repairs were complete I have a picture of me sitting on the wheel underneath here starting to rebuild the floor so it's still very narrow but you'll see I retained the sink in there because I really like those corner sinks with the handles on them and behind me is just some utility things we've taken the coach and we are obviously still working on it but here this electrical has all been changed from 32 volt battery to 240 volt 480 volt uh, head-end power they call it on the railroads, so that we don't have any any batteries or anything else we plug into Ken's generator car and go on our way and so there you have it Ken uh, Thank you, Marty, for the tour. That's wonderful. Thank you for all your work. We certainly appreciate it. What are you going to name the car? It's going to have to be Molly or I'll get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Lake Spear Railroad Museum and North Shore Scenic Railroad depends and is successful because of our great volunteers. And all of our volunteers, whether it's one hour or thousands of hours, are greatly important to the museum. Martin C. Fair stands out for two reasons. One is his commitment and certainly his dedication. And if that isn't visible by going through this car, one man's effort to save history and repurpose it. Thank you for that tour, Marty. Thank you for being with us today. Come back again. We'll have more episodes for you in the future. In the meantime, and this is very important, 
always wash your hands, cover your coughs, don't touch your face, keep a social distance. If you are sick, and this is important now more than ever, you stay home and then be with us tomorrow. In the meantime, though, this is also important. Let's take care of each other.